Good morning kids. This is Joydeep Rakshit, your design thinking coach. Now that we have completed all the processes of design thinking, I will be discussing showing you a workbook of design thinking which you will actually use to get your first design thinking challenge project. Which example we will know in subsequent session. So let's get into it. This is a template which I have created for all of you to apply our design thinking challenge process. So define the challenge. So you have to define the challenge what you want to work upon. What is that challenge you want to work upon? So you have to list down dreams, things or product you want to make which you dream of, you want to make of or you have to plan something. So you can list down and then you have to mention how might we you need to mention how we will be able to do it. So you have to list down all those points how you are going to make your product. So for example, you want to create a product earlier we have taken as an example of intelligent ambulance. So you have to write I wish to make an individual intelligent ambulance or I want to create a product a food service for people who doesn't have time and they need healthy food and they need healthy food <coughs> at their residences because they don't have time to go to buy groceries in the working days at the same time they can't make the food. So for them we need to make a uh, uh, healthy food. So for that healthy food you can create the pointers over here. Then you have to mention how you will be able to do it. So things that could be better, what are the things that could be better? So again here <coughs> we will be going through the all the processes of design thinking where the process of empathize, the process of defining the problem, step by step we will be going through, first we will go through the process of emphasize, we will apply all the tools and techniques that we have learned in the process of design thinking on the emphasize phase, on the define phase where we are defining the problem, then the ideation phase where we are actually brainstorming the ideas, from those ideas we are selecting one particular idea through the divergent thinking and the convergent thinking followed by the prototype creation of the prototype once we have selected a particular idea then we go ahead and create a prototype and then we do the testing. So <coughs> things that could be better, so you have to list down all those things. Again user feedback is very very important, it is the user who are going to give you the feedback how we might me. So, so once you have identified things could be better, what are the things could be better, how might you actually create a solution out of it. So we move, we need to move from understanding or observing a problem <coughs> to defining a problem and then finding a solution from a problem. So as we have discussed earlier also, we are understanding the pain points of the user once we understand the pain points of the user, from pain point of the user to finding a unexpected gain state where the user is going from one state to the other state. What will I work to produce? So you have to define the end goals. Whenever we start a design thinking process, the, the first thing which needs to be keep in, kept in mind, what is the end goal? Keeping the end in the mind end goal in the mind and we start the process. So what are the different things that are going to come out? What are the different objectives of doing this particular project or doing this particular challenge? What measures and indicators will help me know my ideas are successful? So you have to define different different measures. So for example, once you are creating an ambulance app, how many people are downloading the app? <coughs> Say for example, there are 1000 people have downloaded the app, okay. Once next measure can be how many people are ordering or booking an ambulance, say booking an ambulance. Say out of these 1000 people, 100 people have actually booked the ambulance, okay. So these are the different measures that you have to keep in your measurement indicator so that you can know that say for example as a idea creator you want say 500 people to actually book the order. 
so you know that your idea is working people are using your idea they are liking your idea and they are giving feedback as well so that is how we create our measurement indicators so for your challenge you also need to create a measurement indicator what constraints will i need to manage so what are the constraints for this particular project <coughs> you need to understand what are the constraints or limitations of a particular project so based on that you will try to find out solutions to those constraints so other things to keep in mind what are the other things to be kept in the mind for this particular project you have to record all those points because once we record everything then our idea becomes very clear we get a very clear clarity on our project <coughs> what kind of challenge is this circle one curriculum spaces processes and tools systems so which is that challenge you are trying to solve so you have to first list down all those things which you are trying to solve and then you have to select one which you want to solve understand the challenge what are what are some things your team identified about the current design challenge capture key thoughts constraint barriers from the discussion thoughts constraints barriers again you have to write how might we so once you have identified from the user interview about the thoughts their constraints and their barriers about a particular pain point or a problem when a common group of audience is coming about and talking about a particular pain point or a problem once you have understood the thoughts constraints and barriers and you have recorded all those uh, data then you might need to take insights and decide how you are going to solve those problems <coughs> who is in your team who are core members who are extended members through your discussion what did you determine about the roles that people will play and the unique goals that each you have so you have to write your team members name say for example ramesh avik chunku raju so all these are your team members what is their goal each team member has a goal and a role so you need to define each team members goal and role if you have any extended team members so write down the name of those extended team members and what is their goal and role in this particular project define your audience so as we are defining the persona we are defining the persona who is our user persona so once you define the user persona who will be designing for who is this project for for whom we are designing this project what is the design challenge who is the user of this particular design challenge so consider the core audience and extended audience draw a visual reminder so here you create your core audience this is the core persona which you want to have in your user which is actually your user of your product which you understand this is the user is the core audience but there is an extended audience of your product as well so you need to understand what is the extended audience of your product as well so that your extended audience becomes your user in the future so you have create your product so their feedback is also very very important when you define the persona of for your product so for example <coughs> in that same example of uh, that healthy food we were talked about in that healthy food example where somebody who is working who is busy full day they are working they are unable to buy grocery also at the same time they are not able to prepare food at home they need this food but what is the extended customer as we have given the example of somebody who is need of a healthy food for health care needs who is who are not well so they can be also part of this extended customer somebody who are staying alone they are staying alone or somebody who is staying alone for a very brief period of time maybe the family has moved to some other location or somebody who is staying away from the family they can also be prospective customers for getting a healthy food so they are our extended audiences but they also might be users of our product so we need to define who are the extended audiences <coughs> identify sources of inspiration who are 
all the people involved in your topic who might represent extreme behaviors related to your topic. List the candidates that you will think will provide most inspiration and circle three to five that you want to engage with first. So you need to define who are your users. Once you have identified your users and extended users, extended audience, you need to note down each username <coughs> from whom you are going to take this feedback or for, from whom you are going to do this user interview. So that is very, very important once you do that. Okay, So you list down all the users and circle them who you can rate as three to five who are going to give you very positive response or we are willingly to willingly they are giving you responses. <coughs> Where you can go to have an inspiring inspiring experience related to a challenge, what are the analogous setting, exp extreme experiences where you might witness similar or relevant behavior activities in different contexts. List as many location you can. So which are the locations where you are going to take this interview? Is it an external location? It is a in-house location or it is within the school or some other location where we are going to meet these people. It is a public place. It is an event place. So you need to list down all those places where you are going to take, take this activity or action into. <coughs> Who specifically do you want to talk and learn from? So again, user type. If you have multiple user types, so you have each user type, you will have described what are the users. For example, for a gaming app, which has multiple sports. So I might be loving cricket, somebody else might be loving football, somebody else might be loving hockey. So depending upon my choice <coughs> and my requirement, we will be selecting our own games. So the user types are different in that particular scenario. <coughs> so you define all the user type and user descriptions. Then the interview process starts. What do you want to learn to better understand the challenge at hand? What are you hoping to understand about people's motivation and frustration? What do you want to learn about their activities? So now the real interview starts. So you have to start interviewing your users. <coughs> so these are the parameters for that we will be doing the interview. What are the specific questions you can ask to open the conversation? So you have to list down all the questions over here. Go broad. What are some questions that can help you start to understand this person's hopes, fears, and ambitions? <coughs> observation. So once you have done the process of interviewing, now you have to observe. What are you looking to learn in this observation? Capture these themes and questions that you want to make. Sure, you get into the site visit. Fill one of these worksheets for each observation so that you can consider what you will ask for each place you are visiting. So you are going to observe for each user. What are some things you want to make sure you observe while you are visiting this place? What are some things you can do again, inspiration in this place? Now once you have done the observation, now it is the in interpretation or the storytelling. Capture your learning. Immediately after the interviewing, be sure to capture your learning, capture one observation, story, highlight, or quote per post-it note, use the prompts to guide you. <coughs> Who did you meet with? What profession they belong to? What is their age, location, etc., etc., so that next time when you want to create the user persona, you get this information from this particular thought process. What was the most memorable and surprising story? What was the interesting about the way he or she interacted with his or her environment? <coughs> so we need to list down all these questions. So interpretation and the storytelling. So what did these participants care about the most? What motivates him or her? What questions would you like to explain in your next conversation? What frustrated him or her? So these points are very, very important and remember we also have used the concept of five whys in our previous sessions in the empathize phase and also in the define phase we have asked questions why five times for the same so you need to use such processes also over here to understand more depth about the user
<coughs> so once you have recorded this entire conversation with your user, you represent how you want to tell your story to the world. So you use journey map, so your user goes from one step to the next step to the next step to the next step. So they go through a particular flow. Okay? Or all the users have some common grades and this is where your product belongs to. So you have three different users. This place is your product. Right? So you take all the feedback and you find these are the common users that you have for particularly to your and then you represent your product to those users. So similarly you find the relationship, how you want to represent your story, what features you not need to talk about, all those things you will understand once you have recorded the entire user feedback. <coughs> Next is the ideation. So once ideation is, you reach to the ideation phase, you have defined your problem in the previous stage. So you set your goals, break down the task and set deadlines, choose and implement specific strategies, monitor, adjust and problem solve. Ideation, prepare for brainstorming. <coughs> a successful brainstorming session requires planning. The small details matter, invite a diverse group of people who can stay open-minded and kill, can build on each other idea. 6 to 10 is the ideal for a brainstorm. Who will you invite? So you need to mention the names of the people whom you will invite for your brainstorming, for your ideation process. It can be your friends, it can be different people, it can be a diverse set of people as well. <coughs> you need to understand what is the room setup, what all things are required in the room. Prepare for brainstorming. A successful brainstorm session requires planning. The small details matter. Invite a diverse group of people who can stay open-minded and can build on each other's idea. 6 to 10 is an ideal for a brainstorm. Again, you need to checklist what are the things you need for your brainstorming session. The pen, the markers, the posters, the papers, what is the document, the rules, if you have any rules for your brainstorming session, so you need to define those rules as well. <coughs> A successful brainstorming session requires planning, again warm up questions, so you need to have the warm up questions ready for you, what are the warm up questions you want to ask to for this particular brainstorming session. Then again you need to have other set of warm up questions, define your questions. <coughs> and how might we? So once these questions are there, you need to ask how might we, how they are going to do it. Refine ideas. A successful brainstorm session requires planning. So now you are going to refine your thought processes which you have got some answers already. So value, what are the value needs? What is the people are valuing? What is their need? You need to define all those values and needs over here. What are the challenges the people are facing? What are the barriers they are facing? Right? What are the challenges, for example, in online classes? What are the challenges schools were facing when the pandemic just started? So they started thinking on the challenges and barriers, then they came out with the solution of online classes. So depending upon what is the need and how you can do, then you need to identify what are the challenges and barriers. And what is the new concept which comes out of the entire discussion? So describe your idea. So you have a concept name. So in, in the other example we have seen intelligent ambulance. So intelligent ambulance is one of the concepts. So you can give your concept. You can give a sketch of the ambulance, how the ambulance looks like and you can give a sketch for your own idea. How does it work? What are the ways and means and what are the features of this ambulance? You have to mention that. <coughs> Create a concept description for the idea that you would like to prototype and repeat for each idea. So what needs or opportunity does this concept address? So you need to mention all those points. Who does it involve both in building and using it? So who are the people who can build this and who are the people who will be using this? So you have to list down those. One sentence con concept description, what is his idea is about? Description in one sentence. What do you hope to learn more about? through prototyping this idea. 
<coughs> so while you are doing the prototyping, what you will be learning more through this idea. Identify what's needed. So now we are in the process of prototyping. So what are the things which is needed and which are available? So we'll list down all the things. As we have seen the example uh, earlier where we have actually done the tallest building challenge exercise where we have just used two things, the Play-Doh <coughs> and the incense sticks. So what is needed and what is available for the prototype? What are the things needs to be bought? What is the cost and how, where from you will get the money and where you can buy these things from? So sources you have to mention. As already discussed earlier in the prototyping stage that prototyping is a very uh, least cost process where you need to rapidly develop your prototype in the by spending the least amount of money so that you can get the maximum feedback from your users and you can build the product. So concept use, what is the use of your concept? Mention the use of your concept. From there the features will come into the picture impact I am looking for. So once this feature is there, what is the impact or what is the benefit a user is going to get out of it? So <coughs> by online classes through Zoom you are get, uh, or through any other medium for that matter, Google Meet or other process, other mediums, you are attending the classes online sitting at your home. So what is the impact? You are able to undergo the classes online. Method for tracking, how will you track? So you, in, in your case, when you are studying online, you are uh, the, the school is conducting the assessment exams and they are tracking how you are studying and what level you are studying based on the performance of yours in the assessment. Then what are the actions needs to be taken to create your product or the prototype? Then you need to do the timeline like the time boxing tool that we have used. So you can apply the time boxing tool over here and you, for every activity you can define a time based on that you will be able to create the timeline. Now share your story. What was the initial dream gripe that kicked off this challenge? Who was part of the team contributed to the project? project? What patterns partners did you integrate? <coughs> what partners did you integrate? What needs did you learn about? What was the most surprising thing you learned while looking for the inspiration? So this is how you create your own design thinking challenge and through this process of design thinking challenge you go through the entire process where you, we have seen through this workbook there are different different templates shared with you all, uh, already in the same uh, by using the same template also we have used different different tools and techniques and methods to come down and use at each process of design thinking. So we will be using this particular template of design thinking workbook or design thinking challenge for doing our own first design thinking challenge which we will learn in the subsequent session where I will be explaining you about a particular design thinking channel through a process and then you can choose some design thinking challenge processes and you can follow the same way as is already explained in this session. Thank you kids.